Yo, what is going on, guys? First Brooks back here bringing you guys another video, and today I'm gonna be showing some footage I got from Still City Con whenever I went Saturday. I believe it was the 12th. I don't know when this like little vlog thing's getting uploaded. I got some footage from the Q and A and some footage from whenever I actually met David Barclay, who was the puppeteer of Jabba and Yoda and. Drop it and Return of the Jedi, and then Yoda and Empire Strikes Back. I did buy some stuff, so I shall haul at the end of the video. Just wanted to do a quick intro, and I tried to get the best footage I could. There was a guy in front of me at the Q and A who just kept moving, and you guys will see that in the footage. And so I kept trying to get different angles, and it was really shaky. But I'm sorry about the bad footage. But anyway, make sure you guys drop a like, subscribe whenever or before you start watching this video really helps the channel out i'm trying to have 400 subscribers by my birthday but anyway guys i'll see you guys at the end of the video for the haul because that that was a skill that i already had so that was great so i, I went straight in and got on very well with frank and because of that frank said oh yeah no keep david on the ice from now on so so i, I got to do the ice for the rest of the shoot no no different only different in your mind you must unlearn what you have learned None of the shots made it into the film, but there's still quite a lot of um, behind the scenes footage that, that no one had seen. And a lot of it's still slowly resurfacing. I just found another shot of me operating Yoda's eyes, a uh, video shot from uh, the documentary camera. It's amazing. So, yeah. Question right here. Yeah, so you, wow, that's loud. Um, so you have so many people working on one shot. It seems like there's just a lot of love to work one puppet. Now, when you transfer that to CGI, is there as much, like, you know, love put into that character? I mean, is it just a different feeling altogether versus CGI versus puppet? That's a, that's a very interesting question as far as the, um, the mechanics of making it all work. With the, um, when the when, I think when the puppet works really well, you have that team of puppeteers who are working together in tandem, and it becomes a bit like a, a sports team where Everybody knows where you're going. You don't have to communicate. You sort of have a, a sixth sense of what the character should be doing. And then the sort of the character kind of becomes alive in front of your eyes. We don't look at the puppet. We look at the, the, the monitor screen of the very same shot that, the, that you see in the film. So we, we're looking at the TV screen. And everybody's pouring all their energy and their, I guess, soul into that character to try and make it come to life. Um, we do a lot of rehearsal to get to get it. Um, so we're not moving the eyes at the wrong time, for instance. But um, with computer animation, it's built up slowly, layer by layer, so that they start off with just the basic movements and the basic facial movements, and then um, add the detail. So with computer animation, it can be just one person that does the whole thing over a period of time or it can be um, passed around different animators to do different stages of the animation. Um, and then there's also the compositing and all the different light tricks to try and make it look real. Um, different motion blurs that they can try in post-production to make it feel like it's moving in the real world. Of course, none of that's necessary with the puppet. He's really there and you really get a sense of these things. So, um, the good thing about the puppet is once you film him, that's it, it's done, there and there in camera, and you've got that forever. Um, if you wanted to change it, you have to go back and refill the computer animation. If you wanted to go back, you just go back, change something, re-render, and you've got it. So in today's uh, production, where people like to go back and tweak things, computer animation is easier to do than it is with an animatronic. So, um, but interestingly, New Baby Yoda is primarily animatronic. Um, he has computer, ver computer animated versions when it's too difficult and too time consuming to do it with a puppet. But the, the basic look of the Baby Yoda is um, an animatronic puppet that's there in set. And uh, I think the actors and everybody else love him. Okay, another question right here. Question right here. Um, yeah, um, what was the most difficult day on the set when you were doing uh, puppeteering for Yoda? And uh, what was your favorite as well? Oh, that, that's an interesting question. No one's asked me that before. Um, what was the most difficult 
Um, I guess, I mean, every, every shop is difficult in its own way, because as Frank said on, on, that, on that video, it never had been done before. So we were, we were sort of experimenting in front of the camera at a massive cost every day. So um, the, there's a sequence where he um, he's looking for you first, he doesn't reveal himself as Yoda, as you know, and he's looking through uh, Luke's stuff, and he bends over on his knees, and he's throwing things out of the... Now that's, that's every single shot is a different configuration of the puppet. There's a puppet that's got a hole in the, the belly, so your hand goes through the belly, not through underneath. There's a hole that goes through the back. Um, there's different legs, different knee rods, there's different arms. So every single shot was a different configuration, had to cut different holes in all the props. So that took a long time. You just you see it, and he, he turns over his shoulder as though he's going to um, get off the box, but he physically can't, he's nailed down. So they cut just at the very last frame until it becomes obvious he can't move, and you don't really notice it, and then the next time is a different set of uh, puppet rigs. So just going through every single one of those shots, um, that was like technically difficult. I think the most, the hardest one was, um, you know, the classic yoga picture that, where he's standing in, in on, on the ground, um, uh, which is the, the main shot. Well, Frank's underneath the floor with his hand up, reaching up through the floor in, into the puppet. And he was doing that for so long, his hand went completely numb. So he's puppeteering just with muscle memory and willing the puppet to work properly by looking at the, the TV screen. He can't feel anything in his fingers. So yeah, so he was he worked as hard as it was possible to work, I think. Mean, yeah. What was the most fun? Well the most fun was for me the first day that I got to puppeteer when Frank had to go off and do another job. I mean it was just it was an amazing day. And then the the other equal for me for doing Yoda was um, the, the concentrate shot that I did the close up on. It was actually after we finished filming on Empire, I'd moved on working with Jim Henson and Frank, I was on the Dark Crystal. And Frank said, oh, they're doing some inserts. All right, okay, for Empire. And we've got one Yoda shot. I said, oh, great, and we want to see the eyes. I thought Frank would be there because he's available. He said, oh, no, 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 you, you're doing Yoda. And, well, okay, <laughs> so it's like, he was available technically, and he says, oh, no, no, you, I saw what you did, you did fine, so, no, no, you did, yeah, so, so I, I turn up, I get Yoda out of the story, I get in there, and it's me, I'm the entire Yoda team, so I'm putting it all together, it was the last shot of the day, everyone, we were in overtime, everybody's like, we've got to get this week, come on, get it done, <laughs> So I put the puppet up, and I uh, didn't know what we were doing. So they said, oh yes, you're balancing on somebody's, you're balancing on Mark's feet, and then you fall off. And I go, wow, that's actually quite difficult to fake. Because I'm, I'm, I'm on my knees, and they my hand up in the air. There is no legs, there's no, I don't know what, I, I didn't even have to push it to what Mark did. So I don't know what I'm matching. Um, so they're like, right, we're rolling. No, we're not, so we're rolling. So it's like, okay, the first line, it was terrible. And it's like, Everyone's looking around, oh god, where's Frank? You know, you can see it in their faces. Well, what's this kid doing here? So, um, so well, I, I said, uh, oh no, just try another one. So, try another one, and that's the one that's in the film. So, my second tape was, was that. And that, that was terrifying and exhilarating all at the same time. <laughs> Guys, Seth, he is the ultimate creation. <laughs> Harry Fisher has pushed his leg out as close to Jabba the Hutt as anyone. The 18-foot-long gangster with runaway hormones took a liking to her, and a dislike to Luke Skywalker. Where were you inside Jabba? What did you operate? And what kind of exercises did you have to do for your arms and your hand to let you do that for a long period of time? Uh, well, yes, I was uh, partly... Yeah, I think the video answers the question. I was chief puppeteer, so um, Stuart called me up when I was working for Jim Henson and said, would I like to be chief puppeteer for Java? So I didn't even have to audition. It was just, I got a phone call, would I like to do it? I said, yes, please. Um, but I was working for Jim, so Jim had to approve me doing it and he let me go to, to puppeteer Java while I was still actually physically, technically working for the, the Henson company. So, um, 
So yes, I was chief puppeteer, which meant I was doing the right hand. Um, we had uh, mechanical extensions on our fingers, and we were like a three-fingered hand. Um, so that was the rubber arm that would go through the shoulders. And then with my left hand, I'd go underneath his throat and hold the mechanism for his mouth. So I would control that with my left hand. And I did the voice on the set. So that, that, all the folks would say, okay, where's my talk right? But that was me. So, And I did all the dialogue on the set uh, in that voice. Obviously, I was going to be replaced. My voice isn't deep enough. Um, and so, and they were going to dub it. We did everything in English. So, um, so the actors didn't know what Jagger was saying. Because if I spoke in Hadith, they would be, what's my cue line? You know, they would be quite reactive. So um, as far as um, exercising, we did a little bit of rehearsal, but we basically built up our muscles and our um, stamina by just performing. Uh, we had no time. They were so behind on uh, Jab, which was such a difficult, complicated character. We had one day rehearsal without the head, so we could actually get into the shoulders. And, um, and I was standing, so I was able, there was a hole in the floor, which is how we got up into Jabba. Um, so we climbed up there. Toby climbed up and sat on a little um, swiveling seat because the, 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 uh, the, the side of Jabba where he was, you couldn't just cut a hole through the floor because of his side. So he had to sit down, which was a little harder. I was standing, so I could actually just lean my whole body weight into Jabba to make him move around. It was very heavy. So, um, and we would get in first thing in the morning, 7.30 or 8 o'clock, depending on what the call was. We'd be in there non-stop until lunchtime, come out for lunch, um, get back in after lunch and work at the end of the rack of the day. It's 7, sometimes 8 o'clock at night. So, um, so people didn't see us. Um, Toby and I, at one point, really close to the end of the shoot, um, we, we went to one of the assistant directors who helps the actors when they can come and go. And um, we said, oh, hi, Bill, whatever his name was. And he said, oh, you can tell the Jabba guys they're back for the day. And I said, we are the Jabba guys. Because <laughs> all this time, because we were inside Jabba, nobody saw our faces. We were climbing from under the set, so we never went on to the set. So we were there, nobody knew who we were, <laughs> even then. And the other job of the hunt. Oh, good name you have. <laughs> what do you collect any kind of Star Wars memorabilia? Almost oh, yeah. no. oh. yes. Um, yes, I did. Uh, at the end of Empire, I ended up with a Yoda um, foam latex head, a skull, um, ears. So I actually archived them by taking a mold of everything for my own collection. And so from that collection, I've now made a Yoda animatronic puppet that's actually, that talks and has all the mechanisms. So yeah, I, uh, I archive a real Yoda. So that was pretty neat. Now, uh, uh, yes, now I think the blue works really well on this. Can you also write the There you go, do or do not, there is no trial. David, thank you. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. All right, guys, so I really hope you guys enjoyed that footage. It was really cool to meet David, the puppeteer of Yoda and Jabba. That was really cool to meet him, considering Empire Strikes Back is my favorite movie, or favorite Star Wars movie, and possibly my favorite movie of all time. But first up here, we have the signature of him. So I got a nice Yoda picture there, and then he signed my name for Luke. I had him put the do or do not there is no try quote there's a signature and then he put yoda puppet here because that's who he plays this is very nice everyone the signature definitely 
going to look nice with all my other Star Wars stuff up on my wall. Also, um, Adam, uh, my friend Adam bought me the, uh, card that it goes in because I needed one. So while I was getting it signed, he bought me one. I promised I would give him a shout out. So Adam, if you're watching the shout out to you, go follow his Instagram down in the description down below. It'll be linked and I'll pop a picture up on screen right now, right there of where you can find it. So I went to buy a Lego set this year. Um, I bought one the first year I went. It was the. Well, what was, it was something about it was Darth Maul's ship. I forget what it was called, but it was the one from the Phantom Menace. It, I believe, by like 2010, 2011, 2012, around that time, it had the Captain Rex box art. I don't know when that was, but I wanted to get a Rogue One set, and I found one. That's what I was really looking forward to. Now, my dog's barking in the background. Um, we'll be right back. Alright guys, so this year I basically wanted to buy a Lego set. Last year I believe I bought the Sif Infiltrator, I believe it's called. It was Darth Maul's ship from the Phantom Menace and I believe it was the 20, I want to say 20, between 2010 and 2012, that one. But this year I bought my first, well, ex excluding the Polybag Ewing, I bought my first Rogue One set, here it is. The ATST. I keep wanting. I keep wanting to say the ATST Raider because that's the Mandalorian one. But this set looks very cool. Probably build this on a stream. And if you're watching this right now, streams probably already happen because I am recording this on Sunday, and I want to try and get it out Monday, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. And then I got a couple posters. So, first up here, we have this nice Empire Strikes Back one. I've, I've been wanting to get an Empire Strikes Back poster just because it's my favorite Star Wars movie. Oh, it looks very nice. And it's an older style one, too. It's not just like a brand new one. So, it's very cool. Then, we got the Mandalorian Season 2 poster. Very nice, I really like this style. You got Ahsoka, Bo-Katan. I'm surprised they didn't put uh, Boba Fett in there, but you got Hog Vanth. And then they just had a deal at the booth that was selling them, had a deal. It was like three posters for 25 bucks. So I got this one, just a funny joke. I thought it was pretty cool. Darth Vader, and then it's episode three. So there's that, there's the whole haul. But anyway guys, let's head on to the outro. So anyway guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Really cool. It was really cool to go to Steel City Con this year, and or this June. And then actually in August, we're going again. And I believe like Carl Weathers is going to be there, which is going to be amazing. He plays Grief Karga in The Mandalorian. And then a bunch of other stuff like the Kanan actor. And then Wedgie Antilles actor. But anyway guys, that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more content like this, make sure you guys drop a button and subscribe to support the channel. Remember, we are trying to have 400 subscribers by my birthday. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Fresh Bricks, out.